Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be unto you. I'd like to welcome you to our online worship here at St. Paul's Church of the Nazarene. It's great to have you with us. Our call to worship this morning comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 through 13. It reads, The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. This is the word of the Lord. As a church, we believe that our worship is an act of entering into the very presence of God. And I love how this passage describes God's presence, not as a rushing wind or a powerful earthquake, but as a gentle whisper. In the midst of turbulent times, God revealed himself to Elijah in an unexpected pause. It is my prayer that as we enter worship this morning, we too might encounter God in the unexpected. Would you pray with me? Holy God, attune our hearts to you. May we seek you in the stillness and recognize your presence in all things. May we seek you and glorify your name through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear church, please receive this blessing. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us begin our time together by singing praises to the Lord, by singing, Come, now is the time to worship.
scripture reading for today comes from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he went out from Haran. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us continue worshiping the Lord in song by singing the beautiful hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
filled with wonder, awestruck wonder. As we continue in our time of worship, we want to obviously be very thankful for those who have served the church over this past year, and so we especially want to lift them up in our time of prayer. Uh, but let's bow our head and uh, go to the Lord now. Uh, gracious God, we are thankful for all the ways that you have been at work at St. Paul's this past year. We are grateful for those that you have raised up, those that have served so selflessly those who have given generously of their time and energy. We're thankful for those who have served and served well and have done it out of a deep sense of your love and call. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to prepare our hearts and hands, our minds and our mouths to proclaim your glory through all the works that we do. Uh, may everything that we do glorify you. And, and as we are being joined together to be the body, may we also continue to be made one. May our love abound more and more, and may the unity of the Spirit mark our lives together. We thank uh, of those who have served uh, in leadership positions, Father, and we ask that you would just continue to bless them and keep them. Uh, thank you for the ways that you have used them uh, for the life of this church and for our community. And for those who are going to continue in leadership for this next year, we ask, Lord, that you would continue to equip them, uh, that you would... Uh, give them strength and wisdom, uh, that you would watch over them as well, Lord, and continue to give them energy as they serve you and the church. Uh, Lord, we especially lift up our world, and uh, there's so many things that are happening, and it's just been a crazy year, and sometimes it feels so disorienting. So, Lord, we ask that uh, you would even now bring healing to those places where hurt and discouragement have happened. We ask, Lord, that you would be one who is present with those who are lonely, those who feel isolated. We ask, Lord, that you would season our conversation with generosity and charity, and that they would be marked by love and humility. As we enter in closer and closer to an election season and all of the the preparation that goes into that, all of the conversations that happen around those things, and, and how uh, heated it can often become, Lord. We ask uh, that you would just grant us <clears throat> a sense of your abiding presence, regardless of the results, uh, that you would be present and active and working, and Lord, that you would give us ears to hear one another, uh, regardless of whether we believe exactly the same thing, that you would give us eyes to see those that would be of different opinions and different thoughts, that you would give us eyes to see them uh, as you see them, that we might love them as you love them. Help us to continue to move and to grow, Lord, and uh, to represent you well. Again, we are so grateful for this last year, thankful for all the ways that you uh, helped us to grow um, and to uh, be your people. We know that we're not done yet and that you're not done. And so we ask, Lord, that you would continue to prepare our hearts for this new season that's coming. 
whatever that might hold, we're not exactly sure what everything will uh, turn out to be and what it will look like, but we trust that you are there and inviting us into a new future. And so, Lord, continue to prepare our hands to serve as you have served us and to love as you have loved us. And now we pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. One of the things that we are very excited about for this Sunday is that this Sunday is our annual meeting Sunday. Now, if you remember, most of the time our annual meetings are held back in May before the end of our church year on May 31st. However, this has been an unusual year in many ways, and so we had to originally postpone our annual meeting, and so we are holding that today. Uh, we are going to be uh, hearing a report of the various ministries and from their ministry leaders. We're so thankful for all of their service. We're thankful for the ways that God continues to be faithful, even in the midst of these unusual days. Uh, so we'll be looking back at God's faithfulness over this last year and looking forward with anticipation uh, to what God is going to do in the coming days in the life of St. Paul's Church of the Nazarene. All of these reports are going to be available. Um, I'm going to send them out via email. If you are watching online and you would like a physical copy of those, um, I would be happy to get them. So if you'll just reach out to me, I would love to get you a physical copy of these reports so you can read through them. I'm not going to go through every detail of each report. We're just gonna share a few highlights and celebrate our ministry leaders. Well, we're going to begin with our annual pastor's report uh, given by Pastor Levi and I. Um, this is actually our first annual pastor's report, and it is our privilege and honor to be able to uh, submit this to St. Paul's Church of the Nazarene. Over the last year, it's almost been a year since we've been here. It's hard to believe. We came in August of 2019. And over the last year, one of our priorities in ministry uh, was to get to know all of you, uh, to get to know the ministry of St. Paul's, uh, to get to know what you have already been doing in your community for some time now. We know that St. Paul's has a rich history of being a wonderful and loving church, and we wanted to get to know just what it was about St. Paul's that was so beautiful uh, and find out the ways that we could partner with you in this mission that God has given you in, this, in these neighborhoods and in this community. Uh, we've learned several things about you over the last year. I want to highlight just four that have really stood out to Pastor Levi and I. The first is that we have learned that St. Paul's is a generous people. Uh, we have seen this time and time again over this last year, whether it be in giving of your time, your talents, your tithes and offerings. We have seen your generosity, and we are so thankful that you are such a generous people. The second thing is that you have a great gift for hospitality. Whether it's uh, welcoming visitors, welcoming in guest missionaries, welcoming in friends or family, whoever it might be, you have a beautiful gift of welcoming people really well into this place, into this space, into your life. You do that so very well and we are so thankful for that. We've also learned that St. Paul's is a loving community. You love one another very, very well. And we've seen that in the midst of these last days of pandemic. We've seen the ways that you have sent cards to one another. You have called one another. You have stayed connected. You have checked in on one another. Uh, you genuinely just love being with one another. And we are so thankful for the love of Christ that we see tangibly expressed in your lives. And the last thing is that we have learned that St. Paul's has a love for food. 
Uh, so much of our time together revolves around the table, whether it be breakfast before Sunday school or potlucks or celebration dinners or Christmas dinners, whatever the occasion, uh, we gather around the table, which is such a beautiful reflection of Jesus's own ministry. So much of his ministry happened uh, relationally around the table. It's such a beautiful reflection of Jesus's ministry, and it's such a good relationship building tool. Obviously, this has been an unusual year in many ways. Even back in February and the beginning of March when Pastor Levi and I were planning uh, for this annual meeting day, uh, it looks a lot different than it did then. Our vision casting looks a lot different. The plans that we had to, to share look a lot different. Many of them have to, had to be adjusted or postponed or canceled in some ways. Uh, it's been an unusual year. And one of the unusual realities that we've had to, to adjust to is moving to online worship uh, for several weeks as a whole community and in continuing to provide an online worship service. Uh, it is our prayer that this online service would continue to be um, a blessing and that it would continue to allow people uh, to be a part of worship, to be a part of the body of Christ here at St. Paul's in very tangible sorts of ways. A key vision and goal for us in moving forward is going to be to continue to look outside of our four church walls. Uh, we believe that God has planted St. Paul's in these neighborhoods for a reason, and we want to continue to dream and imagine together what it looks like to be good neighbors in this place. And so that's going to continue to be a primary goal and objective over this next year. In whatever we're doing, how can we reach out to our community? How can we be a blessing? How can we tangibly share the love of Christ with those around us? How can we partner with God in what God God is already doing in this place. And so that is going to be a primary goal um, and objective as we look forward as a church family. You know, even though these are unusual days, we are trusting that God is still at work. Even when it's in ways we don't expect, God is at work. Even when our plans are disrupted, God is at work. Even when life looks very different than we had imagined, God is at work. And we are trusting that God has good things in store for St. Paul's Church the Nazarene. We are so thankful for each of you, for your faithfulness, for your love for Christ, and for your community and one another. And we are so thankful for God's faithfulness over this last year. Though it's been unusual, God has been faithful every step of the way. And to God, we give all praise, glory, and honor. Uh, the next report comes from Pastor Jonathan, who has been serving as our associate pastor here at St. Paul's Church of the Nazarene over the last year. Uh, we are so thankful for Pastor Jonathan and for his ministry here. Uh, he has been such a blessing in helping lead worship, uh, in serving with the teens, and helping Pastor Levi and I in so many different parts of ministry. So we are th so thankful for his ministry here at St. Paul's Church of the Nazarene. And we are also saddened uh, to announce that Pastor Jonathan's last Sunday with us will be Sunday, August 16th. That is next Sunday morning. Uh, Pastor Jonathan has accepted a position at a Methodist church here in town as their youth pastor, and we wish him the very best. We know that God is going to continue to bless his ministry, and we are so thankful for the time that we have had together here serving Christ and serving this local church. The next report is from our church board secretary. Uh, as many of you know, Mary Alice has been serving as our church board secretary so faithfully over the last 10 years. Um, we are so thankful for her service. Uh, many of you know that Mary Alice has uh, moved recently, and so she has stepped down from her position of serving as church board secretary here at St. Paul's, but we want to thank her for her faithful service uh, to St. Paul's and to God. Uh, those who served on the church board this year were the following. We had Tim Allison, Randy Blevins, Karen Edmonds, Jeannie Hayes, Earl Johnson, Mary Alice Medley, Judy Myers, Everett Pruitt, Ron Spaulding, and Christy Stevens. 
Uh, as you know, uh, our Kansas City District Assembly was canceled this year. Uh, so was our original annual meeting back in May, which means we were unable to hold our usual uh, church year elections. Um, the, the, our manual stipulates in the Church of the Nazarene that you have to be physically present to hold elections. And we were not able to do that this year. Um, so we are, uh, per the district's guidelines, we are asking that the existing church board uh, serve one more year on their term, and then we will uh, hold elections again next May. So those elections will be coming next May, but our current church board uh, minus Mary Alice, who has moved, and Karen Edmonds, who has turned in her resignation to the board. Uh, the rest of the board members will be serving for another term, and we are so thankful for their service. We want to thank Karen Edmonds also for her service as NMI president and co-leader of our women's ministries. She has done a fantastic job in both of these areas, and she has stepped down so that she can travel and do a few other things that she's been wanting to do. But we are so thankful for her leadership, her service. She has gone above and beyond in every way, and we are so thankful for her. We want to thank the church board for their faithful service over this last year. Um, in the midst of these very unusual days, they have led with wisdom and grace. Uh, they have really uh, sought to make the best decisions on behalf of our church family. And Pastor Levi and I are so very thankful for their faithful leadership in the midst of these days. Reporting for our trustees, we want to thank Ron Spaulding, who is our lead trustee. He has led so faithfully in helping us maintain and upkeep our church property and facilities over the last year, and we are so thankful for his service. Uh, there was a lot of time devoted over this last year uh, to cleaning up our church property, uh, both cleaning up some of the outside area, the brush and things like that along the fence line, as well as cleaning up some of the rooms in our church facilities. We had monthly work days uh, for several months before we had to stop due to COVID. And if you were someone who came and participated in those work days, we want to say thank you. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you so much for your service. We really appreciate you helping us be good stewards of these beautiful facilities and buildings that God has blessed us with. A big project this year was obviously replacing the church roof. Uh, we were able to replace our roof and it looks beautiful and we were able to have a payment plan that we can afford monthly and so it was such a blessing. God has provided each step of the way and to God we give the glory. We are so thankful for the ways that God has and continues to provide for St. Paul's Church of the Nazarene in terms of our property and our facilities. In our Sunday School and Discipleship Ministries for the 2019-2020 year, we want to thank uh, Randy Blevins for serving as our SDMI director. Uh, he does such a wonderful job in helping organize the Sunday School classes and making sure we all have our curriculum. And so we are so thankful to Randy for his leadership and service in the area of SDMI. We also want to thank all of our Sunday school teachers. If you are someone who helps lead a Sunday school class here at St. Paul's, we are so thankful. Discipleship is such an important part of our mission, um, and we are so thankful for our leaders who pour their time, energy, and love into these ministries. We now have several uh, Sunday school classes. We have two adult sun Sunday school classes each Sunday morning, as well as a teen, a children's, and a nursery. And then in October, we also added a young adult Sunday school class. So we are so thankful for the ways that God is working in our discipleship ministries, and we anticipate good things in the days to come. For our NYI annual report for the 2019-2020 year, we want to thank Judy Myers, who has served so faithfully as our NYI president. She has such a passion and love for our teens, and we want to thank her. We want to thank Randy for serving in our youth group uh, for activities and for teaching Sunday school. We are thankful for him. We are thankful for the ways that Pastor Jonathan has served with the teens over this last year. Um, we've been very thankful for our wonderful, wonderful leaders. A few events were really exciting in the life of our teens over this last year. Back in July 2019, uh, Judy and Christy uh, took uh, six young ladies 
uh, from our church and from True Light Church of the Nazarene to NYC in Phoenix, Arizona. And it was a wonderful week by all reports of God moving in tremendous ways in the lives of our teens. They participated in worship services and service projects. Uh, they spent a lot of time building relationships with one another. And we trust that this was such a formative time in the lives of our teens. And we pray that the fruit of this ministry will last for many years to come. Uh, they, the teens led us in a Make a Difference weekend back in September. Uh, this was a great service project that reached out to our community and also raised money for our teen program. In October, five of our teens attended a retreat with Christ Community Church and two other churches. In November, they had Breakaway and we had three teens and two adults attend. And the teens also led us in the hanging of the green service at the end of November, which was a very special time for our church family. Uh, in December, uh, the teens helped Christy and Kelly with the children's program. And they did the Christmas Express, and it was such a wonderful program. We really enjoyed that as a church family. Uh, we did have two teens graduate from high school this year, Alyssa and Feli. And we also had one teen baptized this year. We are so thankful for the ways that the Spirit is moving in the life of our teen ministry. We are so thankful for our leaders. We invite you to continue to pray for our teens and leaders in the days to come, that God would continue to reveal God's self to them, and they would continue to respond to the movement of the Spirit. Our children's ministry report for 2019-2020 begins with a big thank you to Christy Stevens, Kelly Hoagland, and Je Jeannie Hayes. They have all helped and served in our children's department over the last year, and we are so thankful to them for their faithful service. Our children's ministry meets each Sunday morning during Sunday school, as well as several times a month for children's church. And one of those Sundays a month, the children go with Sharon Johnson for a special missionary lesson. Uh, one of the highlights of the children's ministry this year was the Christmas program, which I've already mentioned was the Christmas Express. Uh, we had 11 children and teens participate in this program. It was such a wonderful time together, a time of worship in which our children uh, led us in the good news of the newborn king. Uh, we are so thankful for to Christy Stevens and to Kelly Hoagland uh, for all of the time and energy and love that they put into planning and putting together this Christmas program. I know it meant so much to our kids and teens, and it meant so much to our church family as our teens and kids were faithful to minister to us. Uh, two of our children responded to the Lord in special ways this year. Uh, Kenna made the important decision to be baptized, and Christian prayed uh, for Jesus to be Lord of his life. Uh, we are so thankful for the ways that we see the Spirit moving in the lives of our children. We're thankful for the ways that our leaders help point them to Christ each and every week. And we give God all the glory for the movement of the Spirit that we are seeing in the lives of our children. Our children also uh, were encouraged to memorize the Lord's Prayer in Psalm 23 this year. And if they did that throughout the year, they got a special treat. And I know that was something that they really looked forward to. Uh, for my own daughter, Hannah, it was a highlight of the year. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, we have had to cancel all children's in-person activities since March 22nd. Uh, but we are so thankful for the ways that our children continued to help lead us in online worship by leading the Lord's Prayer, um, by leading uh, a palm parade for us on Palm Sunday. They led us in the call and response of He is risen, He is risen indeed, hallelujah, on Easter Sunday. And we are so thankful for their parents, for the ways that they continue to disciple them and help them to participate in the life of the church. One of the greatest responsibilities that we have as a church family is to disciple uh, the next generation to share with them the good things that we have seen in the life of God, the ways that we have experienced God, the, the transformation that God has made in our own lives. Um, and we are so thankful for leaders that help us do that well as a church family. So thank you, thank you, thank you to our children's ministry leaders. Our NMI report uh, comes from Karen Edmonds, who served as our NMI president. And as I mentioned earlier, she is stepping down, but we are so thankful 
for her faithful leadership over the last few years. She has really gotten NMI um, up and running and a lot of energy into it, and we are so thankful for that. Uh, the NMI Council for this last year consisted of Karen Edmonds, Mary Asbill, Donna Carroll, Amber Hoagland, Mary Alice Medley, and Lorraine Schneer. Uh, St. Paul's had 44 NMI members and 88 NMI associate members during this last year. The theme for NMI was Everybody Ought to Know, and Karen did a beautiful job of weaving that throughout all of the different activities and events and teaching opportunities throughout the year. Uh, prayer was a key part of NMI over this last year. Uh, prayer was incorporated in all of the services, in the missionary presentations, in our lessons and learning about what God is doing all around the world, and so we are so thankful for this emphasis on prayer. Another highlight was our mission book reading contest back in February. It lasted February 1st through February 28th, and we were divided into two teams, and it was a contest. And over the course of that, we had 37 people read uh, mission books with a total of 172 books read. So it was a lot of fun. We learned a lot in the process. It was also a wonderful competition uh, with the losing team having to serve a spaghetti dinner uh, to the winning team. And so it was all in good fun, uh, but it was a great way to get us engaged in learning more about what God is doing all over the world in the life of the Church of the Nazarene. Uh, one of the ways that teens were incorporated and children were as well was Amber Hoagland served on our NMI Council, and so she was a representative on behalf of the teens and helped lead so faithfully and well. We are so thankful for her leadership. Uh, the children also had their monthly missions lesson, uh, which was a wonderful time for them to, to see what God is doing and to learn about how uh, God is bigger than just us here in this physical place, but God is at work all over the world. We were also able to give, as I mentioned earlier, St. Paul's is a very generous community, and we see that represented in our giving to NMI over this last year. We were able to give a substantial offering to our visiting missionary faith promise speakers. We participated in giving to the Alabaster, WEF, and Easter offerings, and to our Nazarene Compassionate Ministries and the Jesus Film Harvest Partners. Uh, we participated in REAP, which is the Raytown Emergency Assistance Program, by collecting items monthly. Our St. Paul's women also made 20-plus uh, no-sew baby blankets to be donated to a local organization. Um, we also had, with Christmas in July, we collected needed items for 60 persons at the Kansas City Rescue Mission, which is now called Shelter KC. It's been so uh, wonderful to see how invested St. Paul's Church of the Nazarene is into uh, giving, mission, uh, giving to missions both here in this community and all over the world. And we want to thank you for your continued generosity. We also had the opportunity to host uh, missionaries this last year. We had Bernie and Rhonda Slingerland who came, uh, who served with the Jesus Film Harvest Partners. And we also had John and Vicki Moore come, who were serving in Australia. Uh, also for one of our mission sites, we had Darla and Kathy, who visited Greek and Turkey, come to present slides, and they related it to Paul's second missionary journey. It has been a wonderful year in NMI. We are looking forward to what God is going to continue to do uh, through St. Paul's Church of the Nazarene as we see not only what God is doing in this community, but also around the world. For our Women's Ministries Annual Report for the 2019-2020 year, we want to thank Lorraine Schneer and Karen Edmonds for serving as co-chairs of our Women's Ministry. Our council included Judy Myers, Karen Spaulding, and Sharon Johnson. We are so thankful uh, to each of them for their faithful service and leadership in the area of women's ministry. Uh, to begin the year, surveys were given out to see exactly what was uh, desired to see in the life of women's ministries here at St. Paul's. And they found that there were three goals. Uh, the first one was to provide opportunities for fellowship to promote spiritual growth amongst our church ladies, and to reach out to our community. Uh, they had a lot of different events. The highlight of the year was the Precious Moments Retreat that we had 
back in the fall. Uh, it was such a wonderful time. We had 11 ladies from our church attended, uh, five from Carol Jones's church, and it was a wonderful time. Uh, we stayed in the Precious Moments uh, motel together. We spent the day at the community center. We made crafts, enjoyed fellowship, good singing, and lots of good eating. Uh, it was a wonderful time of worship, of fellowship, of learning together. Um, it was just a wonderful, wonderful time that we enjoyed. So thank you to the Women's Ministry Council for putting on that event for the women of this church. Uh, the women also provided cookies uh, for the children's basketball practice on Tuesday evenings. Uh, we are so thankful for them. It was such a wonderful opportunity for us to open our gym and facilities to a, a local community basketball team. At times we had up to 60 to 80 uh, children and families in our gym and so that was really exciting, a great way to build relationships. And our women jumped in and they were so faithful to serve uh, cookies and treats after the practice for all of the children. It was a wonderful way to uh, extend hospitality to people in our community. And we are so thankful to our women for leading the way in that. Our women also uh, made no so baby blankets throughout the year. Uh, they pr provided over 20 to a local organization that gives them to new mothers. Uh, there were several events that unfortunately had to be canceled throughout the, the spring and the summer, uh, but we are looking forward to what God is going to do in the coming days in the life of our women's ministry. Uh, thank you so much to our leaders. Again, thank you to Karen uh, for her faithful service in this ministry over the last couple of years. We are so thankful for the ways that we have seen God at work in the life and ministry of St. Paul's Church the Nazarene over this last year. We thank each of you for the ways that you have partnered with this local church and with God in the work and ministry here in this place and in our community. We look forward to what God has in store for St. Paul's in the days to come. I invite you to turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 8, and we will be reading verses 40 through 50 this morning. Luke chapter 8, verses 40 through 50. And God's word reads, Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his only daughter, a girl of about 12, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid. Just believe, and she will be healed. And this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. There seems to be some words that simply do not go together. We call them oxymorons. They're two words that just don't seem to fit. The English language is full of them. We say things like, the person is found missing. One of my favorite foods is jumbo shrimp. Or we say it was kind of a small crowd gathered there. Now, I'm really going to go out on a limb with this last one and potentially offend people with two words that should never go together. Pineapple and pizza. Two things that have no business going together. I dare you to convince me otherwise. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about a theme that seems to be something of an oxymoron. We're going to be talking about this thing we're calling holy interruptions. Now, at first glance, there doesn't seem to be anything holy about interruptions. 
In fact, if we're honest, perhaps interruptions sometimes elicit quite an unholy response from us. Interruptions are frustrating, annoying, disappointing. They disrupt our normal routines and rhythms of life. They disorient us. They are unwelcome intruders, wrecking havoc upon our carefully laid out plans and agendas. This is, after all, in part, why this year of 2020 has been so challenging for us. It's been more than just the global pandemic, which of course has been devastating in its own right, but it has also been the ripple effect of the pandemic that has seemed to disrupt just about every area of life. So many parts of our lives have been interrupted in the last five months. Carefully laid plans have been interrupted. Work has been interrupted. School, graduations, college plans, family reunions and vacations, weddings and birthday parties and anniversaries, church gatherings and programs and activities, all interrupted. It seems in many ways like this year has just been one interruption after another. And if we're honest, perhaps there doesn't seem like there has been much holy about it. Perhaps these interruptions have felt like setbacks, unwanted disruptions, bringing with them disorienting changes. Perhaps these interruptions have even at times brought with them a slew of unholy reactions from us. Like other oxymorons, the words holy and interruption just don't seem to go together. But if we look at the narrative of scripture, the same interruptions that plague our lives litter the landscape of the story of God's people. There seems to be this theme throughout the tenor of scripture in which God comes and interrupts the lives of God's people, interrupts their plans, interrupts their vision for the future, and ends up turning their world upside down down. Whether it be God interrupting Abram's stable, comfortable life with the call to go, or God interrupting Moses' sheep watching with a burning bush and a ticket back to Egypt, or God interrupting the boy Samuel's sleep in the night with an important message for the people of Israel. Time and time again, God interrupts the normal patterns of life in order to reorient God's people to something new that God is doing in their midst. It's no different in Jesus's ministry. If you look at the gospel, so much of Jesus's ministry seems to come out of space created by interruption. So many of Jesus's healing and miracles, his teaching and parables come out of moments of interruption, moments of derailed plans, moments of unexpected encounters. Our scripture that we read today is no different. It's a text marked by interruption. Jesus is amid a crowd when a father named Jairus comes running in, probably out of breath in his hurry to get to Jesus. This father falls at Jesus' feet, pleading for Jesus to come and save his only daughter who is dying. Time is of the essence. She doesn't have long left. Hurry, Jesus, come quickly. There's no time to waste. And so Jesus jumps into action. He and his disciples begin to follow the man, weaving their way through this busy, clamoring crowd, hurrying to the bedside of this dying child. But as Jesus is following this terrified father, he feels something. We aren't quite sure what it feels like, but it's described in the text as this feeling of power going out from him. Immediately, Jesus stops and, and begins to search the crowd for the person who touched me. He begins turning around and asking people, who touched me? His disciples are bewildered, wondering why in the world Jesus would be wasting precious time when any number of people in this large, bustling crowd could have touched him. If ever there seemed to be a bad moment for interruption, it was 
this one. There is no time. There was no room for error. Time is of the essence. A young girl is on her deathbed, and she doesn't have much time left. But Jesus seems unbothered by this. Jesus continues to search the crowd for the person who touched him. One by one, the people began to deny that it was them until the woman, seeing that she could no longer go unnoticed, comes forward, trembling, and falls at Jesus' feet. She explained why she had touched him. She shares her story about her 12 years of bleeding, 12 years of pain and suffering, 12 years of being considered unclean and pushed to the margins, 12 years of loneliness and isolation, 12 years of unmet hopes and expectations, 12 years of sleepless nights. It seemed like the worst of times for an interruption. But in this space of interruption, God does something miraculous. This woman who normally goes unseen and unheard, this woman who has no one to advocate for her healing, finds healing and restoration. In this moment of interruption, she is seen and heard. She is noticed from among the crowd. In the space of this interruption, her entire life is changed. In Jesus' words, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. That which could have been seen as a nuisance, a bother, an unwanted detour in the hurry to get to the bedside of a dying girl becomes a holy moment, a holy interruption. In scripture, we see that these interruptions that we so often dread and seek to avoid at all costs, these interruptions so often become God appointments, times that are ordained not as a nuisance, not as a setback, but as holy. Interruptions become the holy space that God opens up to catch the attention of God's people, to break up the ordinary, to disrupt our carefully laid plans, that we might have eyes to see the new and unexpected thing that God is doing in our midst. Had there not been this moment of interruption of this woman daring to reach out her hand and touch Jesus' robe, she might have continued to go unseen and unheard. She might have not received the healing that she so deeply longed for. But in this interruption, God opens up space for this woman to be seen and heard and healed. In the space of this interruption, a spotlight is cast on the woman. And not only does Jesus see her, but the crowd sees her, perhaps for the first time in a very long time. God does something new, something unexpected, something unplanned in this moment of interruption that transforms it into this holy space where God's kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven. Church, while it's so tempting, for us to view interruptions to our schedule, interruptions to our routine, interruptions to our plan, interruptions to our expectations as a negative, a nuisance, a frustrating part of life. In the hands of a holy God, interruptions become opportunities for God to work in new and unexpected ways. At first glance, it may seem like the words holy and interruption have nothing to do with one another. They are an odd pairing, two words that just don't seem to fit. But church in the hands of a holy God, interruptions become divine appointments, a holy moment in which God opens up space for God to do something new in and through the lives of God's people. In the space of interruption through Abram, a holy people are born. In the space of interruption through Moses, a group of slaves are freed from Egypt. In the space of interruption through Samuel, God's people are called to repent and to return to the Lord. In the space of interruption through Jesus, a woman who has gone unseen and unheard finds healing and restoration. You see, church, 
The words holy and interruption may not seem to fit together, but in the hands of a holy God, they become sacred space, holy ground, a divine intervention. To be honest, this annual report looks very different than any that Pastor Levi and I have given in the past. Instead of rolling out some concrete plans for how to move forward or filling up the calendar with activities, we quite frankly have no idea what the next six months or the next year is going to bring. There is so much that is unknown. There is so much that is uncertain. But in the midst of all of these interruptions to our normal routine and rhythms of life together, we are trusting that God continues to be a God of interruption. A God who can take the disruptions of life and transform them into opportunities for growth and grace. I hear this a lot everywhere right now. I just wish we could go back to normal. And I completely get it. I find myself longing for the same thing at times. But church, my prayer is that in our desire to get back to normal, that we might not miss what God is doing right now in this season, in these moments of interruption. I often wonder what would have happened if Jesus would have ignored the tug on his cloak and hurried on his mission to the dying girl. Uh, or if Abram had decided he was too old to have his life interrupted and uprooted. Or if Moses would have kept his job watching sheep. Or if Samuel would have rolled over and gone back to sleep. What would it have looked like if they would have avoided the interruption? If they had prioritized normalcy and comfort and routine? How would the story of God's people look different if these people of God had not leaned into the interruption, trusting that God was at work in the midst of it? Church, we believe that God has good things in store for St. Paul's Church the Nazarene, and for this community in which we have been planted. And it is our prayer that in the midst of these days that we might be shaped and formed by these interruptions more and more into the people that God has called us to be. That we would not avoid interruptions, but that we might lean into them, trusting that the God who worked in interruptions in the past is a God who still works in interruptions today, a God who wants us to slow down, a God who wants to catch our attention, a God who wants to open our eyes to the new thing that God is doing in our midst. God has great plans for St. Paul's Church of the Nazarene. I am confident of this, and I look forward to the ways that we get to participate with God in this mission and ministry to which God has called us. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are so thankful for your word this morning. We are so thankful for this reminder that in the midst of days that seem to be interrupted and disrupted at every turn, that you are a God who is found in the midst of interruptions. And that though they often seem like a nuisance to us, though they often seem like a setback, a, a derailing of our carefully laid out plans and agendas, we are trusting that if you are in the midst of it, then these become opportunities for growth and grace. These become opportunities for you to open the eyes of your people, for us to partner in ways with you for the new work that you are doing in our midst. Open our eyes. Help us to trust in the midst of these days. Help us to lean into the future to which you are calling us. And we will give you all praise and glory and honor this morning. We ask these things in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive this benediction. As we go through this week, may your eyes be open to the ways that God has at work in the world around us and in the interruptions in our lives. May the grace of the Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.
Well, it has been a wonderful time of worship this morning. Let us go singing the praises of the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son. 